Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of good parts. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me sure. Hello, this is Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, illustrator, toon talker, and I'm here with... Steve Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum here at downtown Docklands, Melbourne, Australia. Right. We're actually in New York, but it doesn't matter. The Art of Joe Kubert. Don't believe me? That's what it's called, The Art of Joe Kubert, edited by Bill Shelley. FB, what's that? Facebook. <laughs> Or it could be FAB. No, Facebook. Um, we don't know the publisher. There he is, look, that's him. That's Joe, Joe Kubert. He's a sort of a legend in uh, the comic book industry. I grew up with him. And you grew up with him, well, you, you'll be able to talk lots and lots and lots about the different comics that uh, he's done. I can only refer to a couple, um, but they were very formative, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. Well, actually, Joe I like Kubert. the fact that he started off with fantasy and in the last 10 years of his life he, he went into um, political stuff. He did stuff on um, uh, Sarajevo and, um, you know, all the, all the war things, so it was really good. Yeah. Really, really, really t- t- tough and... What do they call it? They call it um, uh, cartoon um, photojournalism or something. Hmm. Well, there's... there's um, that's Sergeant, Sergeant Rock. Rock. Yeah. See, I even know. I know who it is. That's Sergeant roughly Rock. done. That's very roughly done, but powerful. It's a DC it? character. Yeah. Um, for me, it would have been like Nick Fury and his Howling Commandos for Marvel, yeah. which are the Marvel version, pale version of Sergeant Rock. Well, um, DC were doing war comics for a long time before Marvel actually even started. Yeah. yeah. It's a lovely... Um, What's that, Tarzan? Tarzan? Probably Tor. Tor, yeah, Tor. Yeah. So GI Combat, so Flash Comics, this is sort of Tarzan. Going up to the 50s, 60s, and then, you know, the last stuff he did. Yeah, so that's an iconic thing, isn't it, with a dead soldier? You can tell. Yeah. How do you know he's dead? Look at the helmet. Sergeant Rock, stop the war, I can't get out. I, I want to get out, so yeah. stop the comic. A typical cover for the Sergeant Rocks. Yeah, so this was in the mid '60s. So, um, yeah, dur- during the um, Vietnam War. Yeah, and uh, they were sort of anti-war. All comics were anti-war. It all became very, very anti-war. Yeah. It became like a popular thing because of uh, you know, obviously with the news, the news reports at the yeah. time were incredibly um, uh, visual and uh, well. But you see, also, you can see how the war, the, the, they're the guys walking through the, the, the war um, um, zone. Yeah, and, and here's his ghost. So they actually had Weird ghost war. stories yeah. mixed up with wars and stuff, you know? Yeah, well, it's try to, you know, and, and try to grab uh, both ends of the market people who want uh, ghost stories and mm. people who enjoy stories about um, soldiers. Yeah, Joe, Kubert into, probably, I mean, there's difficulty. probably 10 great comic giants and he's one of them yeah he's one of them so wonderful splash page there of Tarzan yeah very 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 quick very quick inks yeah he had a very quick way of drawing and it always looked great it looked rough for for the action comics yes and you'll notice that he uses a sort of signature um, halo effect so to cut the figure out of the background even more this is a really cool um, splash page, like an introduction to the uh, story, and uh, Tarzan and, and Cheetah and you know the jungle forms a sort of framing element around um, the plane crash. So yeah, very very interesting, very strong, incredibly strong drawing. Um, you kind of compare him a lot to uh, to um, uh, Alex Toth. 
Yes, that's true. Very solid drawing. That's his Early, first. Earliest known drawing, 1938, uh, from Man of Rock, 2008. So that looks like a, a somebody praying. What's a rabbi? An old man. Is, is it a rabbi? Not, no. Or is it a cantor? I'm a cantor. No, a singer. So, a cantor singer. Uh, Eddie Cantor. A cantor. Mom, he's, she's making eyes at me. Um, yeah, so Eddie Cantor, there you go. No, I don't know. It's just a pr- somebody with a prayer book. Oh, okay. And a long white beard. And there he is there. There's another guy there. There he is there. That's Joe. Yeah, it's yeah. Joe. In the family. Bar Vitzma. This is, uh, is that his bum? Oh, my God, look at that. That's has got a top hat as well. So you really, they're, they're, a lot really, of family dr- there. they're really dressed there up. There must be good Catholics. There's a lot of people there, you know. Yeah. So they're really dressed up, you know. Top hat, white, white tie, tails. You know, Wonderland Comics, very interesting. So it's the birth of the Superman era. Yeah, he was sort of Lou, F- Lou, Lou Fine did the covers and stuff, and he was like the first big star of comics. Right, Lou Fine was. Yeah. Right. Okay, so this is sort of an overview of the era, putting you into the... Um, the context of uh, Joe Q- Kubert's um, uh, first, um, first foray work. into comics. This is School of Music. And Art. Yeah. That's where he went. In New York. Yep. High school. Mm. New York High School of Music and Art. Yeah, very specialist uh, college. So you learn a lot of fine art. Um, if you're going to draw superheroes, you do need fine art skills. You're going to be able to draw the um, the figure quite Life realistically. Drawing. Yeah. So who's this? Cubit gained valuable experience in Iger comics. Iger comics. So you know, Iger comics. This the comics of this era. They, they weren't paid very much money, but that's not really an excuse. I feel that the um, expertise, the, anat- the lack of an anatomical correctness, perhaps in the in the figures, and the overuse of uh, you know this um, shadowy uh, lighting, um, it was part of that era. It was sort of like it's in the horror horror era, like the early days of uh, uh, EC comics. Mm. Um, that's that's well, this is forties. EC's really 50s, early 50s. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is more like, you know, the Phantom Lady was, was an espionage, right? 40s would be uh, fear of Nazis yeah. and then communism and things yeah. like that. And Japanese spies. So, yeah, it had a certain stagey effect, you know, and one of the, um, a, a, like a, a daily comic um, version would be, say, Dick Tracy. Well, you see, that's uh, very... Um the spirit, yeah, yeah, the spirit would be another um, influence. The spirit was enorm- was incredibly, incredibly popular in its um, in its uh, the papers that it was in. They used a lot of this black, very sort of stagey effect, and, and this as well. This sort of layout where you've got these three different or two different um, perspectives. Murder on the stage. And this would be part of, you know, like you, you look at um, Sidney Toller uh, films and that. They're sort of very similar. Charlie Chan. Yeah. Hmm. Shock Gibson. Yeah. Well, this is an original. Rock Hudson, Shock Gibson. So it's that sort of uh, two fisted, um, you know, uh, GI fighters. God, he looks like, like a gorilla, this guy, doesn't he? Look at him. Yeah. Which is kill at dead at uh, midnight at daylight? Kill at daylight. Murder at the terminal. Doctor Fate, nineteen twenty-four. Doctor Fate was a big uh, title, as was this fellow here, Hawk which man. is Hawkman. Yeah, another big title. Like Cat, this is the early days. We're going through, like um, yeah. Well, he, he, he very started with all. He stuff. started with Hawkman. So you can see here, you know, you've got this incredibly stagey uh, context of, uh, of comics, of the pages, the covers, the, 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 uh, the uh, splash pages, etc. That's probably one of the uh, worst um, dinosaurs. 
lots that's been drawn, but there wasn't a lot of reference for dinosaurs. It's not like Google. You, know, you can pull up um, uh, references easily. Well, that's before. But it's a good attempt, and it's typical of that era, I think. You know, he probably used... Good. He'd probably use the same claws for Fu Manchu, you know what I mean? Yeah, so this is um, uh, Flash Comics 90, uh, uh, sorry, number 63. So it would be in the 40s. 1946. The old Flash up here, the old Flash. Yeah, this is 1946. Wearing his tin hat with his uh, wings. Well, based on uh, Quicksilver. Yeah. Or Mercury, or um, in Greek mythology it would be Hermes. That's Kirby. No, it's Hermes. No, it's Newsboys Legion, it's Kirby. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Typical Kirby with guys in the corner coming forward now. Yeah, well, it's a framing device. The Golem. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I don't really understand the context of that in modern comics. The Golem was a man of clay. It was sort of a Jewish... Um, Myth. No, it was a story. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't... We don't, there's no Jewish myths... It's not like what the Bible's Greek mythology. Not a Jewish myth. We'll have a talk about the Bible another day. Yeah. But you know, those of you that that are Catholic or or religious, uh, you could probably tune out. We'll do this another day too. You know. Yeah. So here we go. Um, Dance macabre. You could see the theatric theatricality of the 1940s. It's a, it's just a very um, prolific. Start to a career, comic. Yeah, um, he he did a lot of um, unusual panel shapes. He did a lot of he, he he threw the panels around a lot. Well, it's breaking most... panel conventions, yeah. overlapping and things yeah. like that. It's, you want to sort of keep the the reader enthralled, guessing. You know, the more sort of devices that you put in there for uh, good storytelling, um, the better. Um, you know, when the case of Marvel, for example, you probably get a little bit more of a freer hand under Stan Lee's tutelage later to get more chance to explore uh, other possibilities. This is flying bubbles, okay? Very interesting. You know, it, it, as ludicrous as this concept is, you know, there's perfect perspective in there. It's lovely uh, proportions and everything. Probably a little bit heavy handed on the uh, rendering here and there and of course you're kind of um, this is a sort of a, a line art which is separated from the color so the colors re reproduced from like a, a watercolor sketch watercolor uh, painting um, so it's got a definite um, hue and uh, color range and based was, on the printing method he was obviously influenced by Milton Kenneth yeah, well, some Milton Caniff yeah. brush strokes here. Yeah, well, that is Milton Caniff, isn't it? Examples of Milton Caniff. Oh, it is. Yeah. Terry and the Pirates. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean, influence? Does that mean you lifted bits? No, he was influenced by it. Storytelling techniques. Yeah. He was influenced by it. Yeah. Cool. So was everyone else, of course. Hollywood Confessions. So, again... Son of Sinbad, you are in the spotlight. Something new in comics. Something new in comics by the editors. Having always believed in the adage, truth is stranger than fiction, Hollywood Confessions is prepared to prove it and the aid of your friends, the reader. You have a true story worth telling, blah, blah, blah. So it's trying to be like... The magazines. You know, the at radio the, at the plays time. at the time. Yeah, and the, the magazines. So. Yeah, pulp, ma pipe, yeah. pulp Hollywood comics. Hollywood Confidential and all that stuff. Pulp. Uh, uh, magazines. Yeah, yeah, paperbacks and things, you know, uh, exploitation. See, that's, that's a straight pinch from um, uh, Douglas Fairbanks' um, uh, senior. That's a pretty good well, one. Well, he was he, in the 40s, he would be really, really popular. No, well, and that looks like Dick Go, doesn't it? Mm. No, it's Joe Cooper. Joe Go Cooper. Mm. It's got a, a Dick Go feel about it, that drawing, doesn't it? Yeah, with the perspiration. Yeah. 
Yeah, interesting. Like you, you tr- you, you're getting with a lot of the... The reason why the artist did uh, a lot of these things is not just for the money, right? The secret of success. You can see you can get into the expressions of characters. So not just punch-ups, right, or gunplay. You're actually now getting into the, the emotional... Um, pic- picturing your characters in emotional um, settings, emotional dramas. It's, it's very um, interesting diversity of drawing if you're able to get into them and depict their mind. So a lot of this, you'll see a lot of this stuff, which is very formative. Ditko actually perfected that yes. sort of mastery of the getting into the mind of the see, madness. this is ditko And the madness is the... ditko uh, too, that colour. Yeah. But, but, but this is great. Look at that. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So this is getting I mean, more towards is, out of the 40s and into yeah, the 50s. modern and, comics. And, of course, EC had a hell of a lot of... Uh, they influenced a lot of it, and there was a lot of writing. Yeah. A lot of writing. Yes, so EC actually had the um, the, the worst. Yeah, um, they had three quarters reputation. of the frame with. Yeah. with yeah. So it was kind of like good and bad. You've got, well, there's all the writing, and look, you've got that beautiful space there. So you blow it all, all up and you draw it and you well, colour it in. The problem is that um, when it's reproduced magazine or comic book size, this is tiny. So you lose all of the. This is his first um, horror comic he ever did. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm. Nightmare. It's uh, a Uncle... Cr- uh, no, it's um, the Crypt Keeper, isn't it? Um, no, he's like a... He's like a weird um, Geppetto, what he is. Nightmare. But he's yeah. making faces. Pearl Divers. It's from EC Comics again. Yeah. That's, uh, that's even, even the type of... Yeah. So EC is it's got to do an EC books. <coughs> this is from EC books. It's sort of I see that small pupil, small pupil. This uh, the small pupil denoting madness or on the edge of sanity or fear or something like that. It's a very it's a trope. It's a cartoon trope. Um, but you know people like um, Ditko would have uh, gone on to um, specialise in many ways. Obviously in, Ditko in was influenced by Joe. Yeah, everybody was. All right, so this is my first comic. Uh, my father bought me this uh, Mighty Mouse, the three-dimensional comic, and uh, with the 3D glasses. And uh, there here glasses. I come to see the green. day. And um, I was obviously uh, watching Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll cartoons on TV, and uh, he he loved them too. The Terry <coughs> Jones uh, experience. And uh, my father's English, so he grew up uh, reading Eagle comics um, or the, in the 1940s, 30s, whatever, 30s and 40s, it would have been uh, different, bunter. Oh, it'd be Hotspur and uh, yeah, all that stuff. Valiant and... Yeah, like, you know, the... Ur, the core. Desperate you know, Dan. Yeah. So Ooh. all of that stuff. And then you've got the, the, the holiday... And the big thick ones, with yeah, Billy Bunter and things yeah. like that, I suppose. Well, Billy Bunter came first. Um, so, but he he loved uh, he loved uh, comics, Mighty Mouse uh, in particular, and he got me this, and it had the glasses, and it was very immersive. Now, Joe Kubert and um, uh, also um, um, got well, his he did, name. He did the covers. Yes, we did the covers. He, he did the interior. No. You didn't do the interior? No. Just Norman Moore, Kubert, Norman Moore, satirise. He, he didn't oh, have okay. any clue with the contents, but he did the covers. All right. So maybe you didn't do this either. That's funny. 3DTs. Mm. You get the DTs um, when you, um, What's the when DT? you get drunk. That's when Detention. you hallucinate. Oh, is it? And you see the pink elephants on parade. All right. Okay. House of Terror in 3D. So he did a lot of these covers for 3D uh, comics. Uh, Miss Pepper. That's a um, famous... Uh, our Miss... Our Miss... Uh, uh, what is it? Um, our Miss television show. It was actually based on... Our this. Miss Brooks. That's right. That's right. That was based on this comic, I think. Yeah, sort of a wisecracking uh, red yeah. It's funny... This is Tor, of course. Uh, there's a there's a 3D version of Tor that came out um, under the um, auspices of um, three of Ray Zone, um, Chapter Four. 
What's this one here? Demonstration of Kibble's Well, that's Aliou. That's Aliou. He would have grown up with Aliou, but he was a very famous strip. Yeah. And, um, so the different but he looks of cavemen. Yeah. But like it's sort of like a Tarzan in a in cave day. This is Frazetta's Thunder. That's right, beautiful. Mm. And look, 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 look at the difference. Mm. And he obviously invented a few muscles like Kirby. Yeah. But he did these sort of things. He did a lot of um, he had unusual these beautiful, panels. You know, the loose looseness as well. The brush, the, the brush work. Yeah. This is a still from One Million Years BC, a 1940 film that may have influenced Kirby. So I, I think um, this is 1940, so I, I reckon this has been influenced by comics as well. Well, I mean, they, they, Any kind they influence of... each other all the time. Yeah. They go from... It's Tor, One Million Years Ago, the world of One Million Years Ago. Yeah, it was sort of like a Tarzan in the... In the so one million years ago, you had ghost seagulls. Yeah, You're drawn as simply as possible. Mm. Look at that beautiful. Um, yeah, hyenas or, or something prim primitive wolves. Hair with, hairy wolves. Yeah, with, very hairy with, wolves. With mutton chops. Yeah, half um, half um, oh, uh, well, saber tooth tiger. Horace Greeley. Half Horace Greeley, half Wolf. Go west, young man. Yeah, with the mutton chops. You've seen. I'm sure you've seen Horace Greeley. You can Google him right now. Pause this film. Go and, go and Google Gre Horace Greeley. You'll see the mutton chops. Um, picture of hell. So see, that's very... Henry Cushing was a clerk, middle-aged, very meek. The two things he hated most were his work and Belinda! His wife. Hmm... So, because both were interested in one passion of his life, painting. Yeah. So, you know, very, very nice. Beautiful uh, panels. Lovely panels. But again, you know, um, very wordy. It's an EC. You're talking about EC comics. So that's what happens. Very nice. I don't think he worked for EC comics. I mean, they're, they're very influenced by EC because they were, everybody was copying them. Yeah. I don't think it worked for EC. No. But this obviously, obviously um, there's so much... Oh, there's Norman. What's his name? Rockwell. Ah. There's so much um, Ditko here, isn't there? I keep on seeing Ditko. So yeah, well, the tiny pupils. Yeah, obviously he was influenced by it. Yeah, you know? the underlining. See, the underlining, they use that. They're incredible... You know, the shock expressions, the underlining, the use of silhouettes. You know, they're sort of like, ha, 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 that continues off screen. Mm. This is a lovely, uh, menacing panel. So it's ways of creating a, a relevant um, visual uh, narrative that uh, is evocative, not just with the content that you're reading, but evocative of the, uh, the, the genre. It's a genre building exercise in many ways too, because a lot of this stuff, a lot of these, became tropes that they've used in in um, Outer Limits and you know mm. Night Gallery and mm. Twilight Zone and things like that. It's a lovely uh, flying fortress. Well, this is very Terry Napoleon's. Yeah. Except for the panels. Mm. Kind of um, really. Uh, I think he had a modern trick. I think he had a modern use of. Um, on a matter of yes. yeah. Yeah. But you kind of really uh, stunted your, your palettes, your colour palettes are really reduced because of the uh, effect of the printing method. Um, and in many ways, this sort of dot uh, pattern, even though it's in colour, it detracts away from his beautiful uh, brushwork. It's really, really stellar brushwork. When you see his work up close or in black and white, you start to realise, um, you know, how influential he has been on the comics industry. Beautiful well, he, he was a workhorse. He was um, a reliable workhorse. Yeah, you know? and eventually his dinosaurs became a lot better. <laughs> so, you know, with that one there looks like a, uh, you know, a pug dog. Um, yeah, OK. Is it a pug dog? No. No. So this is very forty. So this is so. Oh, 
Ditko, yeah, yeah. So Ditko would be a, a big um, follower of Cupid. Certainly from this era. The floating eyes, the floating faces, you know. So taking the illustrative uh, experience of the comic panels away from film now into something more lyrical, more of an illustrative approach. So, you know, how to get these um, elements happening in one picture so you get one large panel. Otherwise, the, the dialogue would force you into sort of Dick Tracy style, mm. small panels of talking heads, which we've seen before and it doesn't really work. I like the fact that he has a lot of detail in one picture, a la the, the spirit, and then in others, he doesn't have any detail at all because he, yeah. he wants you to get to the story. Yeah. Very efficient use, like he, he draws just enough to, to tell the story. You know? Well, uh, yeah, the drawing can sometimes, in a, in a story, can sometimes get in the way yeah. um, in terms of storytelling. So you've got to be very careful with that. But he just, you know, love, it, it, here and there you'll see like perfect hands and perfect anatomy and, you know, heads and shoulders and things. So whereas in the 30s and 40s comics had, you, you know, you had all these words and the, and the faces were squashed into a corner or something. This is now more uh, getting towards a more uh, um, mature art form. So it's a, it has a certain amount of its own uh, visual uh, vocabulary and visual strengths now. So it's not reliant so much on the dialogue, on the word movements and the exposition. It's actually trying to tell a story. That's a very uh, that's a beautiful uh, open panel. If you're looking at... Um, the 22 panels that always work, you'll see evidence of that here, over shoulder shot here. So the things that harken back to a film experience, you know, and then uh, breaking with tradition with that film experience into something different. So it's all about keeping a, a, a nice variety happening for your reading experience. So you can actually enjoy reading a comic that has uh, you know, kissing. That has kissing. Oh. Or rock kicking. So he did a lot of Crying. this. Crying. Once he started this, he kept it up. All yeah. The time. He did a lot of this. So what trying, you know, within the formats, trying to sort of break a little bit of convention mm. over panels, uh, etc. Off, off camera dialogue, you know. Right? So. Off drawing board um, dialogue. Yeah. You see how badly affected the uh, line work is with the, uh, the the misregistration of the balloon. A lot of comments were like that. I'd say it seemed to me at least half of them like that. Kenton of the Star P Patrol. Now we're getting back into the 50s. So this is the Flash. Well, it influenced by Flash Gordon ultimately. Um, actually, this is probably the 40s star. I'd, I'd say so. Wow. When are we going to get into the 50s? Well, it depends All right, on so how fast we go. So it's the end of the 40s, and uh, there you go. we we'll have speed it up. So tech, tech, tech. Talking heads, talking heads. A sci-fi story. But space. Yay. Uh, would be. It's so sad to see such a beautiful panel relegated to such a small area. You know? This is the era of... Uh, this is like... Readers would be familiar with Superman's backstory and, well, you, can, you know, Buck Rogers and... Uh, you can obviously. almost hear Wally Wood coming along, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Here comes Wally. Yeah. So it's lovely. Look at this. This, again, you know, breaking with tradition, this sort of multi-twist of figures. So you get, like, a variety in the poses of the, uh, of the characters that, that add to the drama of the scene. It's magic. Really, really nice stuff. And occasionally you'll see sort of more realistic rendering and, uh, of light and shade, um, you know, and this is sort of a very um, iconic um, Samson and Delilah, Victor Mature look. <laughs> Victor Mature. Look at, yeah, look at the 40s. Late, that's, uh, late 40s hairdo. Uh, what's her name? Like. Yeah, Veronica Lake. Veronica no, Veronica Lake, Lake had a had long yeah, straight. Yeah, she had this. Yeah, but she had that sort of. But it is forty. That's forty two. Yeah. Some action, punching. See, that's that's Clark Gable. Big cheekbones. 
can say that they like to cheek Yeah, this is um, his cheekbones. like Brick Bradford. Oh, he was, Look at that little pint, tiny uh, pint-sized uh, pupils. Yeah. So, you know, ooh, that's a lovely um, gun. Gun, a ray gun in beautiful, perfect perspective. Dungeons. What's not to like? <laughs> Talk, talking heads. But, you know, you get a pretty girl in the middle. Yeah. It makes it more. Captain Kenton. Strange worlds. Don't miss it. Walter Legenza. And the Tri-State Gang. This is, uh, again, getting back into G-Men. G, G uh, you know, he's, he's a rat. Like he's a rat. Late 40s now. And he's calling them bulls. Yeah. The coppers. The bulls. The lousy, stinking bulls. It's a very 40s, uh, 30s and 40s term. Well, I mean, I think this book's really it's interesting lovely. for me because it's a real turn-up. I mean, I... Yeah, the, car- the baddies are always really... They look bad. They don't look like... They oh, yeah. don't look like uh, good people. No, right? no. So it's the experience from Dick Tracy. Yeah. Even the yellow hat, you know? Yeah. You should be able to see some Tommy guns here. With some gunplay. There's some... Um, um, what are those square revolvers called? Them... Square revolves. Yeah, that'll do. Great. Smith and Weston? No. No, revolvers. Okay. Um, oh my god. Phantom had one. Yeah, two. Yeah. two. Gun tote. Oh, look at this. Yeah, so, you know, their face structures are different, you know. This is a very sort of based on a. On a, a kind of a bad version of um, Humphrey Bogart. Yeah. Um, this this might even be. Uh, I mean, the, the big turn up looking at this book for me is is, is Don Amici, the evil Don Amici. Yeah. The map of doom, Kubrick. You can see, you know, the, it's a lovely illustrative effect, and you know, to, to put um, to make it like simpler for you, if you check out. The the, um, the spirits uh, open pa- you know first pages um, you'll start to see the the play this sort of you know this puzzle of of juxta- juxtaposing different scenes and, and telling a story a visual story with uh, the opening panel it's lovely and then you get into the story and it becomes like more of a cinematic effect cinematic feel. Um, Horror. You know, yeah. So you're getting into visuals that you're familiar with. And even the, all of the terms, you're familiar with the terms, you know. Very cool. Very cool. It's just a shame that I'm not reading this in black and white. I must say it. It's just out of, uh, fo- out of um, registration ink. Yeah. It's incredibly distracting. Um, I mean... Um... The shadowing on that is beautiful on the sideline. Very, very dramatic. So he loves drama. He loves to tell a story. He tells a story very simply, but he has such an arsenal of weapons. You know, he could tell it sort of abstractly or, um, you know, uh, illustratively, or he could use, you know, film language um, and just mix it up depending on how the narrative's going, whether it's going into this sort of exposition of flashbacks and things. This is a very popular way of doing flashbacks. Um, close-ups, extreme close-ups like this access the man's mm. access the, 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 the actor's thoughts so that's what they're used for cinematically um, and they're used here in a cinematic purpose but you know because of the uh, problem with uh, squashing, having such a small area to Look, illustrate he's, he's, he's shaking the ice around in his glass yeah, there is, he's doing the, the, run, the mumba the Lambert walk Oh, she's mad. How do you know? She's got that crazy expression. And he went, yeah! Well, it's the book. Chapter 5, Professional, 1952 to 1953. Here we go. Chuck Chandler of Curtis in spring training. I don't know what a Curtis is. Donnie Duchak, The Crimson Trail. Well, Donnie Duchak had uh, a can of red paint and uh, left a crimson trail. The Hog, Keep Out. I love these uh, 
you know, um, names and, and story story headers that's, that are designed to catch your attention. This is a lovely uh, panel. This is beautiful. This is very. Oh my God! Well, this is it's really very, very um, influenced by Mad now. Yeah, it's it's looking very Davis. Mm. Men of War, all American Men of War. Some, some fantastic the use of silhouettes. You know, I love the use of silhouettes in comics. So when you see it in black and white, you start to really appreciate how strong his storytelling is. Mm. It's just magic. Army, the Our Army at War. He's got a little cockroach there on his head. No. <laughs> Silverfish. It's a su- no. Get off! It's a, it's a crater. It's a crater. That's right. Brave and the Bold. Oh, I love this comic. Yeah. As a kid. Viking Prince. Never saw it. Oh, it was it. beautiful. It he was... Lovely modelling. You can see beautiful modelling, shading on the... On the characters he, now, like for instance, you know, like he's underwater done, here. Um, he, he'd be fighting. See the halo. He he'd used be fighting to dragons, all beautiful. sorts of stuff. The halo he'd put around the um, the objects, yeah. and you know, occasionally it's sort of cross hatching. It's, it's to create a sense of depth within, not just solid blacks, you know. So to create a sense of dynamic depth, and you'll see um, the uh, swirls. Represented by the uh, brush strokes. Beautiful yeah, stuff. That's a great. Yeah. Really dramatic. Great. A man and his zing. So the bio and the zing zing. Bio, bio zing zing zing. Bio zing zing zing. The blind night fighter. I don't know what that means. But well, he goes sounds blind. Like oh, does he? All he can hear is a bing zing zing zing. Without yeah, my instrument easy. panel, I'm flying blind right into that enemy's fighter's oh, sights. Oh, his instrument panel. His instrument panel shot up. And that's what the zing 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 is. The, the shells hitting the, the dials. There's a nice, strong, uh, very strong. beautiful panel with wham. Yeah, but look at that strong. Yeah, yeah. look at the underlining here. So yeah. close up underlining, you're getting into the thoughts of the, uh, of the protagonist. That's great. Look at that. Is that Soviet rock? Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. It's just sort of there's a bomb coming and it, like you know. GI the, the, combat. The it's not Sergeant are, Rock. It's no, but the combat. straps are floating as a grenade comes towards him. Yeah. Know. Or it could be a coke bottle. No. It was like, well, there's another coke bottle. So it's the, the gods must be crazy too. That's right. This is very nice. It's sort of juxtaposition. He's done this a few times. Um, very strong. Very strong drama, I think sense he, of drama. He's got a lovely sense of drama. I think he used a vertical. Here he is. I think he used a vertical panel better than any other artist. Yeah, top tier artist. Look at this. Look at the storytelling methodology in here. Now he knows how to tell a story. He knows his cinema. He knows his illustrative um, storytelling methods and techniques. So here you have the master at work here. You know, and this is where it it, it all comes together. This is Sergeant Rock. It's lovely stuff. It's beautiful. That's really Robert Mitchum-y. It's a nice uh, <laughs> thing there. Is that a is that a noun or a verb, Robert yeah. Mitchum? mitchum That's a great page too. Isn't it? Yeah, a beautiful page. Yeah, because it's you know it's sort of a, a, a story. It's someone's telling the story. On the ground, story. in the air, in it's the sea, flashback. in the air, on the ground. Come on, chickens. You can set after the war is over. You can set. So that's like another version of, um, hey, you want to live forever? Let's go. It's the Roughneck um, Chronicles. Army, of, um, army at war again. The army's always at war. What's the, there's never army at rest. Army on vacation with Betty and Veronica. The, the, two-timing, the, the two-timing girls. Where's Archie? He's not there. Well, look, look at this. Like, this is humorous. No Although hill it's for madness. Him. It's madness. Yeah. It's madness, but he's sort of... No hill for easy. Yeah. But this, you know, th- again, they're trying to get into the psychology yeah. of, uh, of war. So yeah. this is like the early 60s, I guess. Or, or this, no, this would be the Korean War, wouldn't it? Surely. This would definitely be the Korean no, War. No, they're still fighting Nazis. Are they? Yeah, yeah. But they're having this sort of second thoughts. 
What's going on? Well, he's one of them. What are you talking about? He's one of them. Why oh, is he a baddie? No, he's gone. He's shell shocked. Oh, he's shell shocked. That's why the small pupils are yeah. white. Uh, whites of his eyes. Look at this lovely split scene with silhouettes. Yeah, just so basic. Yeah, it's so simple. simple. It's yeah. so simple. And he uses scale a lot. Beautiful. He does a lot with, with scale. Yeah, and this is sort of, it's seen better days, this uh, black line. The, the um, Indian ink is sort of faded, or ugly. And uh, not getting very good with the um, dinosaurs, but, uh, you know, that's, that's all right. Let's see what else he does. Hawkman does beautifully. This is a very Ditko-ish... Uh, yeah. That's a terrible snake. Oh, and it's a, sh- it's a chimera that doesn't really a fit. A chimera? But, yeah, a chimera. Yeah. A chimera that doesn't fit. So it's like the snake with one horn and bat wings, but their ears... And, you know, and there's a snake, chicken, but chicken. he's got chicken, he's got these lizard feet, and you know, so it's kind of really uh, difficult, hard concept to pull off. But you know, he's made it work. Look at evidence of that in color. Beautiful, nice. So you know, even yeah, though there's this vertical panel stuff again. Yeah, he does a lot of that. That's really, really, he's really dramatic. Gil Kane used to do this uh, yes. a lot in uh, comics because he. He hate, Gil Kane hated working in uh, uh, Sunday comics because of the, uh, you know, the, the designated shapes, the designated oh, yeah, panel you have to change sizes it for the, and all this sort of You have thing. to change it for the... Yeah, so he would kind of break away yeah. whenever he could into something like that. Now, Enemy Ace, mm. I think, was his masterpiece. Yeah. Like, he did a lot of these panels and... You yeah, well, this scale is a lot. incredibly dramatic. You know, the the uh, biplanes. Uh, Snoopy uh, fired once and he fired twice. Yeah, know? well, he would have. You would get reference of these airfix model kits or something, and you turn them and draw them from all these different angles. So, you know, you're five bucks spent on an airfix model kit and twenty hours of frustration with the glue and sniffing the glue and putting some on and sniffing the glue and putting some on and sniffing. All of that, twenty hours of that, right? And you you're pretty high by the end of it. So um, you're getting... And then you have to paint it. Well, no, you don't have to paint it because you're going to draw it. Yeah, you. You just put the decals on. That's what I did. I just put the decals on. And um, I... I, um, But after all that glue, they were hard to put on. Well, yeah, because uh, you're you're high on the glue. Yeah. So it's like the return of the Viking prints. You know, the early early, early memories of uh, smells... FX glue. I can think about it now and I'm, I'm all woozy. So, Sergeant Rock, here we go. What era are we looking at here? No, well, not in the script. It's moving into the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, look at the, the uh, beautiful, accomplished uh, brushwork here. It's magnificent. And the use of the blacks. Yeah, know. he did a uh, he did the green berets so as a strip. As so a strip. many people. Yeah, it's lovely, lovely work. Yeah, towers of green berets. Look at that beautiful explosion. You know, he's he's just really so accomplished at uh, at these things. The storytelling method, the composition, <coughs> the, f- the film knowledge. You know, um, and the sense of drama, and then the illustrative uh, and the balance. I mean, you know, you're kind of at a cross. You, you're really punching out against that uh, that dialogue, those word balloons. But you know, for what it's worth, he has to make it work, and he does. This is a nice uh, semi-abstract panel. That we'll see all the the guys marching. Yeah, in his mind. Mm. In the torn paper. And, and that's the reality. That's the reality. They're in the mud. And there's um, such a dry yes. baby again. <laughs> original art to plug nickel. Make war no more. So this is. Uh, that was on the covers. Yeah. Num- uh, uh, I remember. Um, um, Russ Heath started to do that Sergeant Rock um, comics too, and he was wonderful. Russ Heath had this beautiful, clean style, mm. but um, I could never. I like both of them, but um, obviously he got uh, a lot of his um, um, stuff from um, Joe Kubert. Mm. 
And Jack Cooper uh, set up a, a school. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We did a book review on, on his um, loose cartoon yeah. style, which was lovely. So he's incredibly uh, prolific and uh, So that's versatile. an original. That's an original. Yeah, but look what he did with Plug Nickel. At Nichols. Yeah. Yeah. So Plug Nickel is something to do with uh, your life's not worth a Plug Nickel. It's like you're not worth anything. But look life. how rough, but how effective it is. Mm. It's rough, isn't it? Well, he blew it as you know. And, and, he, and he started a fashion. Oh. Yeah, early Subi. Early Subi. He could sue Subi. Because <laughs> he designed the Subi prior to Subi. Enemy Ace with a the beginning yeah. of the Hawkeye. Yeah. Hawkeye. Isn't that lovely? Look at the way that it comes through the face. You know, the Red Baron chasing the um, Spitfire. With the blue behind. The Spitfire the starting. Behind. What's that plane called? The um, Sop with Camel. Yeah. The Sop with. And the triplane of the uh, the Red Baron. The bloody Red Baron of Germany. Oh, stupid. See, that's very... Um, Eisner. Yeah, it's very Eisner, the, the Sergeant Rock made out and of rock. Here he is, like, crucified. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. These are lovely uh, covers. What if we're going to get bigger versions of them in here? And he did that a lot, too. Yeah, the split screen. Soldier or Savage? And he was adept at, at doing both. That's and right. look, even his T-Rexes are getting better, too. Yeah, and the small hands are getting nice. better. Too. Look at this one here, Sergeant Rock here. There's a hanging... Some, some people hanging by the neck until they're dead. Look at the shadows on the ground. Incredible sense of drama. He's such an incredible illustrator. Um, you know, he really knows his storytelling. Storytelling, yes. Illustrations are beautiful to look at. You know, when somebody knows what they're doing, they so just have to look. Look, look how thin these are. Mm. It's yeah, the one it's picture, thing. but he's telling the story. Yeah. It still works as a sequential panel. Yes, yes, yes. It's tied in yeah. with, the, with the scene, but they're moving throughout yeah. the panel. So having it broken down into slides. But look how thin like they are. Look yeah. how thin the panel is. I mean, well, it makes sense because look, you're, look you're, trying to enjoy, yeah. you're trying to enjoy the big yeah. picture. So yeah. this is a way that he started experimenting with the big panels. You know? And here you've got the vertical panels. You know, and then the, the combination of, of like highly detailed insets and uh, uh, silhouettes and things like that. So it's, it's a really powerful way of telling a story. Beautiful stuff. Superman joins the army. The soldier of steel. The Flash. Wrong. This is not the Flash. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to step on your toes. I thought it was the Flash. It looked like the Flash. It smelt like the Flash. It's not the Flash. All is that splash page. Yeah. Again, you know, that's... Oh, that's the gutter. Yeah. So the gutter is uh, nobody's friend, obviously. Ask any drunk. Um, but look how he accomplishes that. You know, you, you're you kind of like... You're breaking the comic book, spreading it out. Ooh, and you're, you're enjoying the, the way that uh, he's able to tell this massive... A uh, dramatic story with these characters. Billy Jack. Yeah, uh, with these characters, um, you know, the shaman and, and the way that he did it with this sort of novel approach. It's beautiful. The colours sp spectacular within the, the framework of such, a, of such a crude printing method that they used to um, have to work with him. Yeah. It's lovely. So this sort of pose, I guess, is very reminiscent of uh, the Zeta. The um, action poses. Naked people. Tarzan is a naked no, person. No, that's... Um, Tarzan. That's, no, but that's not... That's, um, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Harold, Harold Foster. Foster. Yeah, that's Harold. Early, early Harold Foster. Yeah, so Harold Foster went on to draw um, Prince, Prince Valiant. Valiant. Yeah. With naked bums? Naked. Naked people? Possibly. This is how I would remember Tarzan. You've seen this, uh, the layout well, of the, the strips. You've got these I mean, regular panels, um, right? Occasionally you get, you've got exposition there. You've got a lot of, there's not a lot of... There's a lot of famous people who've made Tarzan their own. Yeah. He, he, he made his own as well. 
Yeah. I love those comics. I've got those comics. Yeah, they're nice. So you can see that it's all based on the um, on the, the reading. You've got to read the... Yeah, not like writing, if you couldn't read English, English, I mean, that page is self-explanatory. It has to be, because, yeah. you know, uh, it's Carlo is obviously Tarzan's mum. And, um, you know, she didn't have... She, she didn't have a Gillette lady shaver, so she got these mutton chops again. Horace Greeley. Thank you, Horace. Go and have a look at Horace Greeley. You'll see these mutton chops. I wish you'd go and west, <laughs> young man. Like that. Horace Greeley. Look at his mutton chops. There you go. Um, first Folio. Joe Cupid School presents First Folio. It's a beautiful down shot of this action. This is very... Uh, rem- Remi- this reminds me a lot of uh, that shading and the, and the re- reflected light reminds me of uh, P. Craig Russell. Oh, yeah. Um, well, he came later. Beautiful decorative effect. He came later. See, you know, it's, don't make the mistake of thinking this is easy. This is not easy. You've got this uh, this helmet, right, that has particular curves on the dragon's wings, etc. And it's in perspective and it's looking down on it. So, you know... Kudos! This is magnificent. I'm pretty it's sure such a Kuba, beautiful, dramatic. I'm pretty sure Kubert didn't draw that. He, m- you, he, he may have. No, there's nothing to stop him. No, he's never done it before. So this is him he, as he, educator. Yeah. Learn to be a comic book artist. Here's your big chance to learn to draw comic stripes, regular and 3D. How do you draw it in 3D? He's oh, with three tape. pencils. No, he's going to tell you. Oh, this is uh, comic straight. So this is like exa- slightly exaggerated. Three-quarter up view, three-quarter down view. So um, they're taking um, ideas that were obviously from the from the. Um, so he started it as a he started his business as a, a book or something, mm. and learned to draw three D, and yeah. then um, it became a full-blown course school. Yeah. So this is based on the, uh, you know, taking the Loomis method into a, yeah. into a new dimension, three dimension. Fun with a pencil. Yeah, this is Tor, um, which is a DC title. Ah, he did he the, illustrated the Bible. Yeah, another one. Mm. That that's the cover. That's a wraparound cover. Yeah, Aleph Ben Gimel Dalit. Yeah. And no smoking on Sundays. That's, you can't smoke on Sundays. You can smoke on Sundays. Because you don't go to church on Sundays, you go to church on Saturdays. Keep up with the program. Muzzle top. There the, it jo- is. the Joe Cuban Young School and Cartoon old. and Graphic Design. Yeah. So this is in the 80s, I suppose, or the 70s, oh, where look, he's, he's, graphic he's, he's art really was a thing. Sticking them all in here, isn't he? You know? Yeah. That's great. And it's in New Joysy as well. Joysy. In Joysy Town. So very nice. That's where, Harry Sinat- that's where Sinatra education. comes from. Enjoy. Isn't New Jersey where the, the, the um, Jack Kirby Museum is? Uh, it's in Jersey. New Jersey. So, Tor again. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, Tor is very interesting to me because I'm a bit of an aficionado of... of, uh, of uh, dinosaurs? Dinosaurs. I really love John Dinosaurs. I grew up with, uh, with um, Turok. Son of Stone. I, I loved his stuff. I love those paintings on the covers. And, you know, I love Why was he the Son of Stone? I never saw a stone cup. A stone tribe. Oh, okay. All right. So. Well, there's something you never, never see. Yeah, you never see that. Sort you never of see that. No. Is it going. He's doing that. Maybe. Oh. Don't know what and that is. Suddenly, means. behind him. These things. Yeah, those things. Which I'm glad you're an expert on before, dinosaurs. Yeah, before th- these things, these were called Dionychus. Dionychus? Um, yes, because actually, what? back here, see these little tiny ones? Yeah. They'd be raptors. Well, that's a raptor and too, I think. No, that's a dinocus. If they're big, they're dinocus. Yeah, but see, the, see that toe? Yeah, that toe. The dinocus had the toe. They ripped their guts out with that yeah. toe. Yeah, you, you've obviously um, watched Jurassic Park. Well, the, the raptors in Jurassic Park are too big because uh, the raptors are supposed to be Small. like the size of turkeys. Yes. So they're small. And they run too fast. Yeah. No, they ran pretty no, fast. No, they run too fast. Everything about the intelligence of the They ran so fast great. that the hounds couldn't catch them down the middle. Of the I think you're talking ground. about the Gallimimus. Oh, two, three. No, um, I mean... And here you go. Look at this beautiful... Uh, how do you do from all of the superheroes 
all of the superheroes here. You've got Tarzan, Batman, Thor, Spidey, um, The Flash. You've got Wonder Woman, Superman, Archie. Archie, the fuck? Get out of there, man. And Jughead. Jughead, what are you doing in Jughead's there, man? Jughead's all right. And Howard the Duck. Howard the Duck? Who's that? Howard the Duck is Marvel. Yeah, well, they got Marvel. they got uh, Spider-Man. Look, it's Casper. What's this? Oh, it's a... Uh... Oh, okay. The Soldier... Magazine Land USA, Spider F. Okay. This is like it's a, a one-off. full color press day. It's a one off. Yeah, it's, of course. It's a, it's a, it's a great, uh, interesting lineup. It's beautiful. But, you know, these two, look at them sticking their heads. All right, okay. Well, you can stay, um, Jughead. But, Archie, you what are you doing there. in there? Red eggs are dead. You get out of there. Look how beautiful that sketch is. It's really, really strong. You know, feel the weight, the movement. It's like a classic uh, war comic, war uh, correspondent well, it's, uh, it's, drawing. Yeah, and it's, it looks like it could be a statue, even, you know, it's so solid. Chapter 9, the graphic novelist. Yeah. Let's have a look. So, graphic novels are all, always uh, interesting because now you're not relegated to the comic book size or tiny books. Um, now you can go a bit bigger you're and you've got about more. 32 um, pages. No. So you can tell, you know, bigger and better stories. And he did this. That's cuffed flares. That's interesting. Um, look at the beautiful um, diagonal composition on that, uh, that, that cover on Abraham Stone. That's really magnificent. That's, that's, that is really stellar. That's a beautiful um, cover. Now look at this, the heroic horse, you know, takes. It's fantastic. So he's able, this is Facts from Sarajevo, which is uh, a, a, an Eisner Award winning um, mm. novel. Uh, this was incredibly poignant and, um, and, and sad. And, you know, it had, it, it, it was really Joe Kubert telling something that was really heartfelt, and he did it so well. Uh, you know, that's that's like um, how would you equate that to one of Eisner's greatest works? Yeah, probably yep, the, yep. the one where he's questioning God. Ah, well, know. he did that a bit of times. You know, he did that a few times. Yeah. So look at that sweeping brush strokes, sunset coming down. He just he understood everything. He he, he could draw anything. Anything and eventually dinosaurs, but he could draw anything at all, and he could, you know, it was part of his visual language and the strength of uh, his uh, brushwork and the fact that, you know, he wouldn't over embellish things is yeah. really, really important. Right. So you've got that sort of silhouette effect, yeah, which the sort of spotlights the action, and uh, you know, it's just really, really good. And he cuts things like a master director, a film director. Joe Kubert, Your Cell, which is, uh, you know, obviously on uh, the death camps. Very, uh, again, you know, he's not afraid to touch on these uh, to uh, topics that are, that are har um, harangy and, uh, and difficult. That's the view inside an oven. I think he'd be influenced something you don't by, want to be there. I think he'd be influenced by um, Eisner's last stuff, because Eisner did a lot of stuff he did the protocols of zion and all that stuff i think it would be because you're jewish he'd grow yeah. up jewish and, but i uh, think you know he knew his time was going and he, he it would be part of the melting pot yeah but he wanted to do something serious and something you know instead of just this is a beautiful graphic art piece that is incredibly strong look at the beautiful the way that his signature bang you know joe Kubert's signature just uh, really sets that off it's balanced that rifle with a helmet would be out of balance without it, so you need Joe's signature there. Um, that's a beautiful, simple um, um, graphic cover, a graphic novel cover. Vertigo, of course, is the graphic novel version or the uh, the uh, sequent, uh, the graphic novel brand Company. of DC. Yeah. So you, you know, even the stories. Reminiscent of the 50s, uh, obviously, you know, the Sergeant Rock stuff, but um, getting into, into like, you know, very uh, strong human drama through this down shot of the killing. Very, 
very poignant. And an upshot followed, downshot followed by an upshot, then an extreme close up, then a, almost like a silhouette shot, then a reverse silhouette shot. And look how he's destroyed the um, perspective by having the character flat onto the uh, bottom of the panel. It's great. So that's the, you know, breaking rules is what good illustrators can do, and he's, he's one of the best. There's that iconic. Uh, that's terrific. Look, it's all there, and then it goes all to there. Yeah, so this is reminiscent of Sin City. Again, we've got the, uh, yeah. you know, the rim light and the, the chiaroscuro effect, or the film wire effect, if you like. You know, you get this sort of beautiful um, uh, linear um, looseness of, uh, like, some of Eisner's um, this is also, city. This is also like um, the peace sign, you know? The hole in that, the hat. The, the, or the, the Mercedes. Yes. Could be the Mercedes. Oh, look at this. This is. Um, Could be an I. A, a, a half back to one. I want a new car. Hmm. What car will I get? Something. This is. Um, get tickets. What's his name? Hogarth. Bernie Hogarth. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Did stuff like that with Tarzan. But you know, he wasn't afraid to do the graphic design and to plonk things. You know. Uh, that's really uh, like an accomplished illustrator tackles graphic design and comics and all of this and bang, and he was able to do it beautifully. That's that's a lovely, lovely cover with that uh, framing device there. This is, uh, again, let's have a look at the dinosaur. Yes, it looks like a very big uh, crocodilian. 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 Beautiful. Okay. Very, very nice. Here we go, some Jack Hunter here. This sort of uh, movie poster effect, a juxtaposition of uh, sizes and things like that. This I've seen so many times. I've, I've loved this because of this huddle of, um, of uh, action. These uh, saurians that are sort of in this sort of um, close uh, cut, close cropped uh, death, death dance. It's magnificent. And it's got a looseness about this too, which is beautiful. Mark of Cain. X marks the spot. Mm. Preventative maintenance monthly. Don't know what that means. But he, you know, he does lovely, um, that's a beautiful. Nude, semi-nude, reverse view. Yeah, these are lovely. Uh, the looser sketches are incredibly accomplished. Yeah, I, I beautifully I, compose, and lovely compose, and a good setting for this uh, tone paper. Of all the artists that, that I know of, I, he Most had the looser style, but it was the, it was very effective. Yeah. Very effective. Yeah. Here we go back to comic scene. This is uh, Joe Kubert, seventy-three, and he's gone back to revisit some of his more. Um, um, Stranger animals and things. This is a Hydra That's or a Hydra. A comic scene was put out by yeah. Stranger. So nearly said Hydra, but it's Hydra's seven heads. This is obviously based on Hydra. So the uh, you know the star monster from Godzilla. Beautiful stuff. Joe Cubit, the Viking Prince. So you got a little bit of. Um, Prince Valiant and a little bit of Ditko and we're happy. <laughs> it's nice. It's good. Whoa. GI combat. Look at that scene. Bang. That's a that is that's like dead. Eisner. Yeah. Or um that's like um It's so strong. Yeah. It's Eisner. No, it's like it's more than Eisner, it's like Elder um, What's oh, yeah. his name? Um Kurtzman. Yeah, Harvey Kurtzman. The um Graphicness and the simplicity of, of the approach is just really, really well done. This is, uh, yeah, okay. Nice triceratops. Uh, I don't know what that is, a toidle. A toidle? Yeah. Rip Hunter Time Master. When was this done? This is early. I think it's just a smattering of the different, uh, this would be different ones. Be like probably early, early 50s, um, 50s, late 50s. 50s yeah. It's great. GI Combat. A lot of these, and you know, they're very, very uh, iconic and uh, they're beautiful. It's that, nick that uh, nickel again. Is that cut like nickel? Plugged nickel. Uh, 
stuff. Oh, this is beautiful. That, that is a down shot there. Look at the action around the little girl. A piece of rag and a hank of hair. Hank of hair? Hunk of hair? Um, so these are soldiers, GIs, fisticuffing with uh, Germans, with uh, Nazis. A Sergeant Rock cover. It's a beautiful cover. This one too. Look at the diagonal of that. The mm. strength of this. He did a lot of diagonals. Yeah. Diagonal, diagonal. So yeah. it's a Dutch tilt with a diagonal. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you can't get better than that. That is, oh, that's like, that's, wow. You know. Great covers. Yeah. Look Which, at this. The strength of this. Yeah. You know, the foreground, right? You are POV. Boom. Yeah. GI combat. And you're fighting a Nazi yeah. from the African Corps. So you're right in the middle of the jungle, yeah. sweaty jungle, and you know, and you've only got this gun, and you've probably and you're probably out of bullets. So you're going to use it as a battering that's ram. That's starting to face you. you know? Yeah, I mean, he's about to he's about to kill you. So you're going to protect yourself. You're in a protective stance. But at the same time, strong you know hands, that face there. Hands, you're going to bunch. You're going to break that nose for sure. But that's you know, that's his. This is what Cuba what Cubit's like. He has these, uh, gra he has a strong, he has, a, he has an illustrator above all, and uh, his storytelling methods verge into the graphic design and to, you know, brilliant comics and, and a, a language of film, which he brings into it uh, as well. This is a beautiful cover. Weird War, again, look at that. That's magnificent. Kudos to DC for printing a beautiful cover like that. Just so simple and strong. Lovely. That's, I can't, that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. Great stuff. I'm so happy they put these uh, covers in there, and I think that's it after this page. It's just a bit of uh, indexing and things like this. This is Bill Shelley, of course, at the editor. What's his background? He worked for DC, numerous production, archive books for DC. Probably might. Yeah. Who's that? That's a demon. Oh. Kirby's demon. All oh, right. This is DC. Oh, okay. I don't know very much about that, but well, that's um, after, there you go. Uh, after Kirby left. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, as far as uh, war stories go, this sort of uh, really kicked ass. And um, the only thing comparable to this, I, I used to read, um, I, I must confess, I've never read Sergeant Rock. And the, the reason why that is because Kirby did such a beautiful cover uh, or covers for um, uh, Nick Fury um, and his Howling Commandos. I just couldn't get past them. His covers just leapt at you. Uh, they jumped out at you from the, from the shelves. Anyway, this is Franz Cantor and... Jim Bridges, and that's a great back cover. Yeah. Is that how you sign off now? <laughs> no, that's... That's a great back cover. No, that's the book. Okay, that's a great back cover. Okay, and this is Jim Bridges from the Australian Cartoon Museum in downtown Docklands, Melbourne. Wherever saying, that is. Saying, see you next time. And that's a great back cover. Bye-bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.